I'm walking across the Mzumvubu River. I am in what is traditionally known as Transkei. Officially, it's just part of the Eastern Cape now of South Africa, but it's still known as Transkei. And I'm making a whole series of vlogs about Transkei because I'm here now. I am about six kilometers outside of a, a town called Port St. John's. Let's just wait for this car to pass. And I'll, I'll live here for a while, I don't know how long, indefinitely, make vlogs, take photographs. I might have a few music gigs here as well in town, checking the place out, continue with my art, and every now and then I'll go to Cape Town to do what I need to do there. So... Quite a busy road. So this is the start of the introduction to Port St. John's. So, hopefully I'll be doing a lot of little vlogs, not only about Port St. John's, other places around here, villages, the culture of the place, what happens around here, do interviews and podcasts with interesting people, apparently there's a lot of interesting people here. This place is steeped in traditional culture, obviously, and it's really beautiful, it's so lush and green, it's so different, and it's so African, and I love it, I love the African vibe, that's my thing, man. So let me show you the rest of the river and welcome to the first vlog, the introductory vlog to Port St. John's in Transkei, in the eastern province of South Africa. Let's check out this magnificent river. Up ahead there, there are these stalls, they sell cooked mealies, corn, corn on a cob. You can buy it fresh, four on a pack, or oh, it's huge stuff as well. Or you can buy it cooked, it makes a nice healthy breakfast. It's really cheap, so it's 15 Rand for one, and it's big. It's not like the normal small ones you get in the shop. I think I'm going to buy one for breakfast, yeah, in front. And uh, hopefully that will be okay with the camera. Hi, can I? I want to buy a mealy, but can I put it on camera? What? This one? Yeah, but can I put it on camera? Okay. I want to. Uh, how much is that one? It's 16 rand. I want to buy one cooked one. It's 15 rand. Okay, for breakfast, please. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right, fresh mealy, yeah. freshly cooked. And the ladies are beautiful and smiling here. Yeah? yeah, nicely nice, cooked. Yeah. As you see there, yes. and it's going to be healthy yes. to build my muscles even more. <laughs> What's your name, my darling? Nocive. Nocive? Yes. Okay, cool. So, healthy breakfast on the way to town. And try one. Ah, next time we'll do that one. Thank you. Millies, eat your millies, it makes you strong. <laughs> come and buy it, come buy it, yeah. Yes, can buy it. It's in Only this one today. Next time. <laughs> it's nice one though. What is this water? Selfie. <laughs> Thank you, I'll see Thank you later. Bye. See you later, see you later. It's piping hot, just been cooked. Fresh. And it tastes like corn, maize, really. Right. Healthy breakfast, bro. Bros. Yes, the crossroads. 
Where are you going? That way. Sit down. Waiting for the taxi. Whoever gives me a lift, but that guy just drove past. Maybe he doesn't like the camera. I don't know, but uh, we'll get one soon, I'm sure. It's quite busy this road. I actually feel like walking for a bit. I just want to check out the area. I don't feel completely safe with my gear and my cameras because I heard like Transkai is not what it used to be. You do get robberies from time to time, especially on the weekend from outsiders coming in mostly. But uh, yeah, I have to vlog, so I have to take a chance. As you can see it's very lush and green, we had a lot of rain last night, the whole night basically, it's the time of rain, the rainy season, but I'm going to see if I can get a lift, so each I can see what are the chances of a Mzungu like me getting a lift to town, let's check, try it out. You know? We'll keep on trying, I'll probably get a taxi, but uh, you know, never know, we have to try. So I'm taking a walk towards town. And see how far I get. It's a nice walk, it's beautiful. And let's wait for these guys to pass. And all along the river, you get these lodges, they are lodges all over. No lift so far, but enjoying the walk. It's beautiful. It's so green. So lush. <laughs> it's like paradise, man. Try again. Maybe we're lucky. Slow one. Well, at least I got a wave. The river mouth is starting to open up, so I suspect I'm getting closer to town. On the edge of town and I resisted the urge to take a taxi and it's not a bad walk it's really nice it's a nice brisk stroll for I don't know 45 minutes and then you reach town Enjoy I'm 
Tyre P. That's what you do here, you do Tyre P. This is your shop. <laughs> Are you the man? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yes, the manager. That's the manager of the tire repair shop. No, this is the manager. Oh, no, the manager. That's the owner. No, this is the manager. Oh, the manager's in there. It's a tire repair shop. They come into town, so. This is the manager. Yeah. The manager? Yes. So, can any car come here anytime when you change the tire? Yeah, no problem. How's the prices? Yeah. Good. Good <laughs> prices. Good <laughs> All right. Take it out. Do you want your tires repaired? Here it is, next to the river. Entering town now, and it seems quiet for a Saturday. There's a waterfront here, waterfront restaurant. So we go check it out. So this is the waterfront, the Port St. John's waterfront restaurant, right on the river. I've got some beers here, I see a bar and food, and yeah, it's quite cool. met this young man here at the waterfront in uh, the waterfront bar whatever this place is next to the river and he said he walked all the way down here from Joburg so I want to hear his story yeah. what is your name sir uh, Andrew man so Andrew. tell your story uh, okay so uh, me and a friend we were staying in Joburg we lost everything there there was no jobs there and we started we hitting the road you know and we left there we got one lift from Heidelberg which is close to where we were staying till uh, close to Durban and from there we were hitting the road one side all along down side the coast sleeping different beaches every night went places you can't get with a car or anything else saw some amazing things and I'm, I'm telling you it brought me so much closer to God because some stuff happened on this road you know stuff that won't happen while you're sitting at home like yo it was a journey and we came up till here we were looking for jobs he found a job here I found a job here and we're staying here so far it's going good lovely place lovely people here how long have you been here? I've been here for a month now and uh, what job did you get? Um, we're doing all kinds of things, uh, like all, all woodworks, carpentry and things like that. Huh? And what did you do in Joburg? Or? Uh, in Joburg I was working for the government. Uh, and uh, government. Th things fell apart? Or? Yeah, it fell apart. Yeah, I did some bad things. I lost my job and things that side. Ended up some bad places and then I had nothing. I lost my wife, my kids. I had everything there. And then, yeah, we hit the road, you know. There was nothing that side for us anymore. Do you want to get into what you got up to? You're not no, 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 no. I'm not going back. No, I had Cape Town because I'm originally from Cape Town. I was in Joburg for four years. Right. I had both big city lives. I'm enjoying this peaceful life. But do you want to tell us how you got into trouble or don't you want to? Ah, uh, no, no. Okay. No. And what is the most dangerous thing or most interesting thing that happened to you on the road down? Well, no, nothing dangerous really happened to us. It's just some things... Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain. Some. It's, it's really spiritual things. It's really like crystal things, you know. Um, I, I wasn't close to God before I left the journey. I, I broke away from Him, and when I left the journey, there as the stuff was happening on the road, it brought us so much close to God. Signs saying God loves us, cars passing with stickers on them, and then we, we'll pray for things like we don't have anything. We're hungry throughout the day, you know, and then boom, in the middle of the night, something just happens, and then we're going again. Like we found a gold chain in a dustbin. Like how do you find a gold? We picked up a Samsung Galaxy S7 on the road. Cool, man. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he, he's been with us the whole way. Yeah. Thank you for telling your story. I'll oh, see you around, you so bro. Much, man. Cheers. Thank you. Entering the central part of town. It's a bit of activity, not too much. I'm a bit worried about the possibility of getting robbed because they say on weekends a lot of outsiders can get busy. But I see a lot of police cars as well, but from what I heard. The police are not always that quick to respond, but uh, let's just hope for the best, right? Eh? 
Port St. John's is a town situated on the wild coast in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. It is situated about 80 kilometers from Mutata and it is known for deep sea fishing and shore angling. In the center of town, and uh, this is the start of the vlog about Port St. John's. I'll be shooting it over some time, be coming in and out, showing you different parts in and out around town. But this is the start. So there's a nice hustle and bustle in the center of town on a Saturday morning. People are coming to buy supplies. I'm assuming a lot of people are living outside of town in villages and stuff. So but it's busy. Yeah. People are driving. It's cool. It's one of those magical, amazing shops you get absolutely everything. It's like anything you can think of you might need is in this shop. Even this huge speaker. Oh. That covers the central part of town, more or less. Busy on a Saturday morning, all kinds of shops, basically two main streets, and even some amazing magical shops, like the one we just visited. That was interesting. And I survived. So it's no secret that because of the amazing fertile soil and the climate in this area this has always been a big ganja growing area today still and in the old days a lot of ganja was smuggled here to the rest of South Africa to Cape Town wherever to get sold and it was very dodgy in those days obviously highly illegal these days it's not so illegal uh, but also there's so much good ganja everywhere I don't think there's a big market for it anymore, but they still grow a lot of ganja in this area. We'll go into that more uh, soon. But they have this little ganja shop. You're yeah, not a ganja shop, sorry. A little grow shop. So they've got all kinds of ganja related stuff. So if you want to grow good ganja, you can buy some stuff here. Check it out.
you can hear the power is off again long power cut today hours most of the day actually I just spoke to the shop owner very cool guy and he said yeah I don't have to worry too much about safety here specifically here in this town it's pretty safe you hear all kinds of horror stories in Cape Town and other places about how unsafe it has become but it says it's really not that bad it says maybe the bigger places like Tata and so on that's not so cool I think this is what I'm going to vlog for today that the central part of town and I will take it from here bit by bit cheers What is happening? I have my first gig here in town tonight and in Port St. John's in a bar. Hopefully it will be a regular gig so I'm waiting for a lift. Anybody that wants to give me a lift because uh, I have to go set up and do sound check and stuff. And uh, so far people have been very friendly so I've gotten lifts here so easy. So I'm just standing here waiting because I don't have a car or a vehicle and a taxi is a bit expensive for me. And it's about 5 k's, so I'm just going to wait until somebody offers me a lift to town and uh, then we're gigging, our first gig tonight. Yeah man. I didn't have to wait too long, Dennis, a guy I met here at Kremorne, I don't know, some name of a hotel, I get the name wrong, I'll title it in here. The closest bar to me, I met him and he's working there now and he said yeah, he's going to give me a lift. So I just walked out of the gate, barely walked out of the gate and uh, I got offered the lift so I'm all set but I have to walk a little bit down, 100 meters down and get him at his gate so we're all set now I'm carrying this stuff but uh, that's not a biggie, it's not far how's it guys? <laughs> so it's cloudy and there's thunder coming through or in the sky in the back you might hear it now so I'm hoping oh it's starting to drip so I'm hoping I'm not gonna get caught in the rainstorm now while I'm standing here the, the weather changes extremely quickly it's sunny then it's raining and it's sun again and it's raining again I don't know if you can hear that fun in the background and I've got all my stuff here so I'm hoping Dennis is not gonna take too long otherwise my stuff is gonna get wet that's a problem Starting to drip now, seriously. This is Dennis. It's just in time. He's giving me a lift, so I get my stuff in here. Dennis is giving me the lift. Thank you very much, Dennis. <laughs> it's the second time Dennis is saving my life. The other day as well. And it's always brilliant timing because I hardly wait and then Dennis pops up. I think maybe it might be some kind of angel. Yeah, Dennis the menace. Dennis the menace. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I'm in town. I just dropped my gear at the venue. But there's another thing going on here in town. So end of the month party, I don't know so it's my competition <laughs> let's see what's going on here Sorry, can I ask you what is going on here? It's a festival. It's a festival? Yeah. Music festival? Yeah, for traditional. It's a, maybe it's a music or traditional festival, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to a music festival. I see an Eastern Cape banner in the background, so maybe it's organized by the government. I don't know. But anyway, that's going down there. It's quite a lot of people. Big party, big party. I 
I'm way early because I didn't know if I was going to get a lift, so I, I stood in front of the road, in the road, early. So I'm two hours early, but this, uh, this is the place I'm going to play here under this little red canopy, and we'll see how it goes. Hi. How's it? Are you Chris? I'm Chris. Who are you? I'm Glenn. Hi, Glenn. You How's might it? be on camera. No, it doesn't answer me. This is Glenn. <laughs> it's going to be in a vlog now. I uh, acted in a film here in Port St. John's in 2003. Then acted in a film. What was the film? What did you act? What did you do? Three Needles. I acted the part of an intern. Really? Yeah. I hope you got paid a lot. So was the pick. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you've been carrying... I've had this all these years. This guitar pick for how many years? A lot of years. And tell us a story. Where did you get... From whom did you get this pick? I got it from Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones. There you go. He gave it to me as a gift. A Ronnie Wood pick. Touch by Ronnie Wood. You can maybe sell this and buy a house here in the, in the Port St. John's. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, the mouth. Taking a leisurely stroll on the Sunday, so the gig was nice. Um, I played for about two hours. Then we had the DJ take over, and there was dancing. Lots of drinks, too many. I said, no, I don't want more, but I just I kept coming. So, <laughs> that was cool. So, there's parties everywhere, even here in the sticks in Transkai. Just going to pause here because there's a car coming past. So, it looks like paradise here, and it is nice because this town is not that small. So, it's a nice mix of, you get more or less what you need. Um... It's a lot of people, there's enough people around to have a social life and it's also really beautiful and remote very different from the city in Cape Town another car coming out, this road is very very busy there's a lot of fancy cars going up and down here I think there's a lot of money being spent here in development I see this road is being tarred I think or paved or something this road in front of So there seems to be a lot of projects, but like any place, it's not all paradise. There are a few major drawbacks to live here. I thought I would give it like three months to see if I want to stay here more permanently, because I do like it, I like the African vibe, but the drawbacks are, despite many power cuts, the normal power cuts you have, even additional power cuts and water outages and Cell phone towers going down. We haven't had cell phone reception now for a week. So I don't know internet is down. Um, if you work remotely on certain projects like I do, that's not very good. Um, yeah, so there are things. Apparently there's a lot of pothering. Like petty theft, which is also worrisome. Seems to be quite common. And I don't really think the police cares too much about stuff like that. Which is also worrisome for a person like me that does video work and stuff like that. And uh, outside of town, I seem to get less easy here, quite easy, but uh, I do a lot of walking, which is not bad. And yeah, so this is not all paradise. It's great, it's good, but uh, this is not for everybody. So we'll see how it goes. So far, so good, but. Uh, I know I've learned my lesson not to fall in love with any place too fast because things change quickly. So I will see. But uh, yeah, just giving you like a bit of a heads up of what's going on where my headspace is because this is a vlog and this is part of vlogging, talking about where you are and what you're doing. Okay, but well, it's so beautiful. Look at this. River is just down there, all kinds of maize fields and people are farming, small scale farming because the ground is uh, 
Kurie. Just took a walk up to the golf club. So yes, there's a golf club here. And it seems to be a big party going down here. So let's go check it out. What's your name, sir? Your name? What, my, my name, name is Chris. What's your name? Chris. Steve. Steve. Are you like uh, this is my? I make this. Chris, you meet you, my brother. Cool. Are you like guys staying here in Port St. John's permanently? And how is it here? Is it like? Is it nice? Is it no, no it's in South Africa where you don't find crime. I don't believe it. I sure. You better believe it. I hear, I hear, I hear that people steal a bit here. More than, more than Cape Town. More than Cape Town. I don't think more than Cape Town. <laughs> but it looks very really laid back. Yeah, people they don't break houses. If you leave stuff, kill it. It's like monkeys. Monkeys you can jump out of the street like a bread. Make it. You see, it was outside. Hey, I make this. It's one of my products. Yes, yes, yes. How do you do that? So these guys say it's like safe here in the school. So. Hey, guys. So that was the golf club, it's right here on the edge of town at the top of the hill. And yeah, I'm listening stories about Ports and John's and people's experiences from all angles. People that have lived here, that grew up here, and haven't been here this long. Everybody has their own subjective opinion and uh, we'll see how things fall apart and I'll give you my opinion and view on the angle on the, on the place as well. There's no one truth ever in anything. It's always perceptions and experiences. And uh, yeah, this is the golf club and let's see what's next. So I'm staying here at my friend's house. The cell phone tower has been down for a week and a half. Power comes and goes. Today, mostly no power. Sitting here in this room making some art, practicing my music. Check it out. Getting too dark now to work or to do anything. Not sure if the power will go on today. It's going to be boring sitting in the dark. Batteries are going flat for everything. So those are the drawbacks. And it's like a pain in the ass. I've got a lot of stuff I want to do and finish. But, um, you know, without cell phone signal, without um, internet, being far out of town, without light and electricity. I mean, what can you do? You can just sit and chill. Um, it's actually, I would say... Quite a lot worse than Malawi. Malawi, when I was there, and there was at least a, more electricity, a better internet, cheaper internet. Anyway, let's hope the power comes on today still, and tomorrow I'm going to finish the rest of the Ports and John's vlog, and it will be posted soon. Cheers, man. From a rainy, dark, Let's go. <laughs> so I'm filming the last parts of the Porsche and John's vlog today. That's what I'm doing today. And I decided to hitchhike to town and I stopped here at the crossroads 
and a random guy from Switzerland picked me up and this is him and that's so cool I was just standing there starting to hitchhike and he stopped and he says he doesn't know where he's going who Hi. are you? I'm Leo I'm from Switzerland and um, I'm just planning to go for, to Coffee Bay yeah just driving around checking out the place yeah South Africa this is beautiful the first, first time here first time here yeah and where next uh, next is uh, Coffee Bay and then uh, I will move on to Cape Town I think Great. So that's the way I like to travel, just like like the same as you, Leo. Yeah. I just like go and see what happens. I don't think the sound is going to be very good because it's windy but I'm standing in front of First Beach just on the edge of Port St. John's apparently this is not the coolest beach coolest beach, it's second beach, I'm going to go there now but just to show you this is First Beach and uh, it's the last bit of first vlog official vlog of Transkei I'm doing now about Port St. John's and uh, yeah I'm just showing you the other side of town this is the side of town I came and I came here first long long time ago. Okay, let's go to second beach. So I asked for the way to the second beach and now I'm at this crossroads because typically in Africa people say just go there and then you have to figure it out so I'm like okay which way now left or right so I'm waiting for somebody to give me a, a sign or show me where to go to second beach but you basically walk up the hill from first beach which doesn't really make sense because first beach is there and then second beach is I'm assuming this way but I'm assuming this must be kind of a peninsula or something, I don't know. Can you tell me where second beach is? Is it here or here? Second beach. Up here, okay. Thank you very much, cheers. Okay, so we know it's up. I would like to appear in the media, this photos. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how is it, uh, do you live here, are you local? Where are you from? I'm from Cape Town, but I'm here now for a while. And you? You're from here? Oh, I'm from Lucid Beach. You're sicky, sicky. Yeah. I want to go there, I want to vlog there. I was just sicky, sicky. Is it okay? Yes, I'm coming from. I'm working at it in Flaliti, the Quechua. Okay, cool. I'll show you guys the sicky, sicky at some point. Yes. Okay, so now we're getting off this main road and going up a little road up here. So I'm no, no, I'm a bit confused. So we're going up here. Okay, let's go. I'm trusting you. Yeah. This okay. looks like a, a road to somebody's house, but apparently we must go up here. Okay, this man says I must not worry because it looks like we're entering a house or a premises with the house, but he says he's got a plan, so let's follow and see what happens. Oh, a secret Hi. pathway. It smells bad here. Yeah. Smells like shit. 
Some drain is broken. Okay, so this is the secret road to Second Beach. Oh, I see. The Second Beach secret shortcut. You saw it first on Free Wild World. Alright. There's a strong smell of shit and ganja in the air. Huh. Right, that road goes back to town. This goes back to town. This side. How far? How far? How far? How many, how many kilometers? Not more than two and a half kilometers. Two and a half. Okay, two and a half kilometers. So the road is second, second beach road. I'm gonna try and see if I can hitchhike because I'm lazy today. I'm so fucking lazy. This is going very straight. This one. Very lush and fertile and small little houses and bigger houses all next to the hill, next to the canopy of the trees and like embedded in the hill kind of, very steep, it's kind of cool, very interesting. And in front here we have another, looks like a maize cellar, so people are selling something informal, a little roadside stall type of vibe. Sir, what are you what are you cooking? This one uh, they call it kafnyak. Yes. What or is in it? Or soapy. Soap. Soap. Yes. Is it like soup? Yes. It's a beans, uh, beans, uh, mixed with fresh beans. Fresh beans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So a different kind of microclimate, I think, on this side, possibly. a bit of downhill now so I think we're getting closer to second beach and I'm excited to see how it's gonna look. They even have street lamps here, amazing. I don't walk, I don't think I'll be able to walk back. So hopefully I'll get a lift, otherwise I'm just gonna cock. But there's a river at this side as well. I just spoke to a guy, he says it's 10 minutes more walk to the beach. So there's probably a reason why all kinds of random strange characters escape their past and come here. Because this feels like a place you can just get lost in. Once you hit this rural area, it's like, it's another world, the world outside there, that doesn't exist anymore. So it feels like you can just escape here forever. And it's like this uh, tower on your senses, it looks like a paradise to escape to. And I think it makes you think of all those movies where the westerns, you know, where the people, they flee to Mexico after robbing a bank. They go down to Mexico, same kind of, kind of vibe, you know. There's a slight lawlessness in the air, which I love. <laughs> the people that gave me a lift from Umtata here, the first day, they are the owners of this backpack, is I'm a Pondo. But I first want to go down to the beach, and I think my last stop and the last place and the last venue for this block will be I'm a Pondo. We've arrived at the beach. Unfortunately, the weather is not so good. It's the rainy season and it's cloudy and the light is not good and it's not a sunny, beautiful beach day, but we are here and it looks amazing. And uh, I'll come again definitely when the sun shines. Uh, this is how it looks, the first sight of second beach after 20 years. How's that? Paradise, baby. Here we are, second beach. Let's go down. Hopefully I don't fall my ass off. I see there are some cows on the beach as well. Interesting. Now that I am actually walking on second beach just outside of Port St. John's in Transkei in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, I'm asking you humbly please like and subscribe to my channel, The Delves of the Algorithm. I need to grow my channel. I spend a lot of my time and my life doing this. I love doing this, vlogging, showing people stuff. And if you like this video, subscribe at least, man. Come on, just do it. Hit button.
Watch the fish, stop it. I tell you what, there's very much a festive vibe going on here. There's fires burning, I'm assuming you can ride there. There's music playing from speakers. So it's very festive. I can't wait to come back on a sunny day. Bring a cooler back with a few cold beers, some meat, and yama, and to come and hang out here. What a day, man, that'll be. I see you guys are brine. Yes, sir. Nice. Looks nice. Yeah. 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 Cheers. Okay, they're looking for me, but I brought one beer to celebrate the end of this vlog, so I hope I can open it here now. How's it, guys? Can you open a beer for me? I, you have an opener? You eat meat. That's okay, guys. I'm going to drink a beer and go to... Uh, Eat meat, yeah, eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> so they invited me to have a bit of meat and eat of them, and uh, it's really cool. People are very generous. Thanks, guys. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna have this beer, eat a piece of meat, and then I have to head back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See you in the next vlog. Check the Apparently, there's enough drink as well. It's all part of here. On a Wednesday. I've been trying to remember when I was here as a young man, naively coming here with nothing, just hitchhiked all the way from Stalabos, I was a student. But I'm telling you, I don't remember anything. I don't know if it's because I'm old and it's too long ago or because the place has changed so much. I think it's changed a lot. But I, what I do remember is this little beach here, this section, and that little house next to the beach. I remember that was a kind of a backpacker's thing and I was there and I didn't have money. And I think I camped on the lawn and they were like writers from overseas, journalist type of young guys. I was trying to write an article for a magazine, which never happened. Frustrated at being a student at university when I just wanted to be a free person, living a free life, trying to be an artistic life. I didn't have the confidence and that's all I remember. I remember this little beach and that little house. Since I'm here now, I will have to go check out this memory, this remembrance. I want to see what has become of that little house. It's, at least it's still there. And uh, yeah, it's so strange to be here now after all these years. I've changed so much as a person, as a, as a man. I've had a completely different outlook on life. I'm a much more desensitized to life. I'm much more less of a dreamer and a romantic. I've become hard the last few years. Because, obviously, when you grow older and you become an adult, you realize life doesn't turn out like you want it to turn out. It does whatever it wishes to do with you. And uh, my life has been quite rough, to be honest. Uh, not rough as some, but uh, I mean, what am I? Kind of a drifter. 
God, it's still has dreams, but they're not as colorful anymore. I still make music. I still write poetry. I still make art. But the world has changed. Those things are not that important. Uh, yeah, I'm just so different. But I suppose this is part of growing up. And now I'm going to check out this memory. And I don't know if I want to laugh or cry. I'm not sure. I feel like touched and sad. and I don't know. And I'm going across this river. I don't know if it's the same river as the... And some boob is probably obviously a different river, but uh, some kind of river, yeah. I was here more than 20 years ago and I remember staying here a night or two having no money having nothing then I just started walking around here to that side around the mountain I just followed a, a boy and uh, I got lost I was lost I thought I was gonna die at one point I just tried to take a shortcut and uh, I just got completely lost and I just kind of uh, boondu bashed through the forest and I got out again then I spent a few days just sleeping in random huts and the people fed me and changed my view on life completely having much more respect and tolerance for people of all backgrounds because I had nothing I was so stupid and naive I just believed in the universe and I just hitched like that and I just moved into the bush and people looked after me but it was also unfair because I'm a Mazungu I'm the one that's supposed to have the money but they looked after me and it was profound scary and profound and I don't even remember how I got back all this distance to Stella Bos. I had a stick in my hand, a kitty, a walking stick, and I just stood outside of Stella Bos and then decided I need an adventure, I need a change. I'm just going to hitchhike. And I hitchhike with nothing. More than a thousand kilometers I came here. I remember this place and it's like hitting me really hard now. It's not always good to, to uh, dig up your past. But here I am now confronting myself, that young man. Full of, hope, full of hope and dreams and sadness also because he didn't do what he was supposed to do. He didn't get what life, he didn't think life was actually so shitty, like people are so shitty and so hard. And so, and I've held on to that young man for so long. That man had believed in magic and stars and that people are good and art is good and that artists and musicians are good and sharing. And then I realized that it's not like that. People are sometimes bad and jealous and artists and musicians are sometimes just full of shit and jealous and they don't give each other space and uh, that thing of just maybe I grew up protected I don't know but that thing of just sharing and being a human together and enjoy it's not really here it doesn't it's here here and there and bits and pieces but mostly it's kind of shit and people are shit and there's wars and struggles and it's hard to make a living it's hard to make a life and that romantic dream was shattered over many years and I've becoming I have become so hard and jaded like I'm facing that innocent young man standing here in the, under the moonlight watching over this little beach I'm dreaming about art and being a journalist and being a, a musician and all that stuff and I, I was always just too scared to do it and I'm still doing it but it's not the same I, I lost it I lost the plot I'm hoping maybe I'll get it back somehow. Somehow. Seems to be all locked now behind the gate and it's private property, so seeming things have changed. Oh. 
So I'm standing here, it looks different. I, I think it's this little house in front of me. That's the old house where we used to live. I think this one down was all new. I mean, it was a long time ago, but it's still a backpack. Yeah, it's not a backpack. Ah, it's just accommodation. It's just accommodation, self-catering. Okay, it's not a backpack. It's, now it's just self-catering accommodation, but this is definitely the little place, yeah. It was here when you came here. I'm pretty sure it's this. <laughs> right. Smoking joints in the stoop. Having conversations about philosophy and politics and how we can save the universe. This is it. Oh, this is not open to the public, I'm assuming. No, this is private. No, this is private. Oh. I almost walked in here, but that spot is private now. But yeah. Sweet memories, man. Young, idealistic man. So, that was my profound experience by Maya confronting my past and I feel kind of relieved, I feel kind of happy now actually because that young guy is still in there deep inside him man I just rambled on with these two guys staying you know and I just rambled on why I'm here and I just uh, stayed silent and listened to me <laughs> this crazy guy but I feel relieved because you know why that guy that was here, that naive guy that just believed in the beauty of life he's still inside you, he's still living in me and I'm going to revive that guy. I'm going to start believing again in the beauty. After all the years of growing up with pain and hurt and rejection. And hurt, to be honest. As a fragile human like most of us are. I'm going to revive that young, hopeful, romantic, poet, guy that believed in love and peace and, and beauty. And that... Life living on this planet is worthwhile. Cheers, guys. Some bread on the other side, a pool table, a DJ, and booze. I mean, what more do you want? That's it, man. That's good enough, you know. Yeah. I did kind of sneak in with the truck that left though, I didn't 
pressed the bell, so I'm unannounced. But I'm looking for somebody that can tell me a bit more about this beautiful, amazing backpack. Obviously a dorm room. Not a type of dorm room thingy. Another one. Very cool. Blue Wandle. Single beds. Okay, this is just a walkthrough. Very neat, very tidy, very beautiful. Definitely one of the best packers, backpackers I've seen in my life. So cool, look at all the space, man. Hang. Paradise. Another type of dorm room. Beautiful art. Neat. There's a fan in the ceiling because it gets hot here. Communal kitchen. Check it out. Nice. Look at this thing. It's like a self closing door, African style. Fridge. Oh, you can have some nice conversations here, right? International conversations. All right. And yeah, great beach, great vibe, great backpackers. I mean, fuck, I don't want to leave again. Hello, this is on the of backpackers, the young chef in town. This is Bootle, their boy, their boy. Fresh rolls and everything, but we cook it so clearly, we cook it, keep it clean. Best pitch in town, let's check out my kitchen. Let's go. Cheers. You got a small bar, right? Enjoy yourself. You got the best menu in town. I think I'm still doing good for some for for for, for young chef. I think I'm still doing good. This is my kitchen. It's a little bit small, but something that you can work with. This is my work stove, this is my kitchen, this is where the magic is. It looks amazing. Yeah. It looks like you have everything you need. Tell me what type of food is your cooking? Okay. My type of food, type of food that we make around here, it's uh, mostly short, uh, short meals, like pizza beer, tramezzinis, nice baguettes. Uh, mostly we try to keep it local, we try to keep it small, we try to keep it as local as possible because um, we don't want to overcharge people and then we lose customers. So far, um, I'm trying my best to get fresh fish from the sea, but that's something that's going to take for long. But all in all is, please come to Puts and John's Backpackers. Cheers, we out. I'm back at Amapono, the backpackers. I was this close to finishing the video, the vlog and releasing it. But then I said, can I come and DJ here? Because I, I like to DJ every now and then. Progressive house mostly. I'll put my link in here for my mixes. And I said, yeah, come and DJ. So I'm here tonight to DJ at Amapondo. Apparently the place is booked out, so hopefully there will be a few people. And uh, let's check it out. I'm going to stand and DJ tonight. And this vlog will end with a bang. Oh, by the way, I, I was looking back at the footage and I saw how fat I have become. I used to be fit and fit and an athlete, but somehow I just let myself go. And so I'm saying on this video, on this vlog, that I'm going to start getting back in shape. I have to do this. I, I'm not ready to let myself go. So there will also be a progression from now on on my vlogs. How I'm faring physically. I'm putting it out there because that will motivate me to exercise. So there will be before and after in each vlog. Uh, how I look physically and then I'm going to start exercising and let's see if I can change this old toppy, this old man shape of me to a better version of myself. Cool, let me show you where I'm 
DJing tonight. Quite a nice DJ box. Nice sound, and it's going to be a poker game there. Please introduce yourself and tell me what is happening here at Amapondo tonight. My name's Peyton. Um, every Saturday, Saturday afternoon, we play a little bit of Texas Hold'em poker. Uh, normally, mainly locals, but we welcome any of the guests or anybody else that's around that wants to play with us. Small stakes, uh, lots of fun, nobody gets hurt. Right. I'm glad nobody gets hurt. That's cool. <laughs> DJ debut, yes, I better fucking do well. You know? party last night and I really enjoyed the DJ set so hopefully we'll definitely do it again but I think finally this is this is the end of the vlog I might take a oh it's a bit rainy I thought about taking a walk on the beach and then going back and then doing the final edit and this very long vlog will be finished finally and then we'll start the next one so see you soon from a beautiful slightly rainy drizzly Port St. John's